Welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to this episode of The Turning of the Year. This is a four part series that shares a glimpse of my festivities and traditions and the ways in which my family celebrate this holiday season. On this edition, there will be the theme of paper and chocolate. I am so deeply grateful for the financial contribution of my coffee members and patrons. I will be sharing a little glimpse into our speculous cookie making over on that vlog. For all who show up, a deep heartfelt thank you for joining me on this creative journey. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here, but also when tree oh christmas tree thy leaves are so unchanging i wanted to take this seasonal opportunity to use my new cookbooks to their fullest potential and this included the nordic winter cookbook she has a recipe for truffles and i thought i would give that a try and i used a combination of dark chocolate and bittersweet for this particular recipe my toppings were cocoa, I used freeze-dried raspberry powder, which was scrumptious. I also used coconut and then just some colored sugar for festivity. It was really cool to use my Cricut to make my own boxes. I used craft paper and cardstock, and these have turned out to be perfect for gift giving. Waxwing, waxwing, what do you bring from the frozen north? Waxwing, waxwing, we've been waiting on you. I bring the amber that I have gathered on the northern seashore. I have fathered for thee I've been underground where wyverns are bound and where gold and jewels should Acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Should all the acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Talk 
cup of kindness yet for days of old lang syne. On a recent studio vlog for my patrons, I made a couple different types of decorative stars by folding paper. And this got me thinking about surface design and creating my own decorative paper. I'm happy to use whatever is around the house, but you can also purchase your own beautiful papers. I wanted to lean into using the gel plate for this occasion because I do like the kind of faux plaster finishes, metallics that you can achieve for an all over surface. You can also do prints on these. They're really versatile. They take a lot of different mediums. I'm using acrylic paint here. I have used distress inks. You can use oils. You can use Posca pens. So it has a lot of value across many different mediums. It is also a great way, as I mentioned, to make prints. And so using different stamps or objects uh, you can create these type of ghost prints. So you'll see I'll pull off this background and what's left on the plate is the impressions of the ferns and cedar in paint. And then I can go back and pick that up. So it has lots of layers that you can play with um, and then see you know, how your results. Every time you pull it and I have talked about the gel plate before, but every time you pull it, it's like a little bit of a surprise and a mystery and a gift. And that's a very compelling art form to me. I love making prints and I love the gel plate because again, easy to clean up. I can use lots of different mediums. Here I'm using some alcohol to split the acrylic and I'm going to use some distress inks from Tim Holtz. And the papers that I'm using I think I mentioned are found papers in some instances. So packaging that comes in the mail in boxes, that's some rice paper. I've used deli paper, envelopes. Um, so it's really easy to walk around the house and find things that don't really have uh, a use, maybe aside from starting a fire uh, and putting it into uh, some decorations. Now, I was really inspired by Robin McClendon. This is her new book, and I was excited when this was published. It kind of coincides with a number of her videos on YouTube. I've mentioned Robin's work before, and this book is specific to Gel Plate, but she's also a bookbinder and uh, art journaler. And this book highlights a number of different techniques and ways to use your gel plate. And so it covers not only the technicality of that, but there's also kind of a spiritual journey she takes you on through this concept of mythos. And there's little stories that go with particular pieces. It's laid out really beautifully. She gives you some color palette ideas to work with. And then it has a variety of mediums, like I said. So here she talks about Sumi ink and intuitive uh, script. Uh, it comes with some stencils. She designs her own. And so I have found this book to be really valuable for jumping points and creating different uh, looks and feels on my papers. Now, the only thing for me about this book, which is challenging, is that it is a beautiful hardcover book. And so when I have it laid out next to my workspace, I am a little bit, you know, worried that it's going to get completely ruined because I am not a clean or <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Organized artist. And neither am I that in the kitchen. So things end up all over me. Uh, but other than that, it is a beautiful book. It's well written. It has really good instructional value. And if you are interested in mixed media or gel plate, I would recommend. Whoa, oh, oh. Making our Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But 
This is my favorite holiday. It's a chance to start over new. Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you. These are the good times with you. Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making a Christmas memory. Snowflakes are a great way to use up some decorative papers that you've made or found. They're a great way to customize the decor for the holiday season. I use mine right up into the spring. They round out the overall feel of my home. I put them in windows, I hang them on doors, and it gives a nice whimsical charm. The other thing I like about snowflakes is you can use a variety of papers. So we're kind of back to that found around the home theme. This is packaging from a box. And the other thing that I really like about snowflakes is even once they're cut, if you decide that you want to leave them plain, that's fine. But they also are now another canvas for more decorations. So you can use pens and glitter and paints, whether that's you, do, cre you create it before you cut or after. I tend to again, enjoy that kind of cutting and then that surprise of how it looks in the end. So I don't tend to use pre-fabricated templates that I've downloaded. On this particular one, I'm just using a white Posca pen to add a little bit of flair. I've made them out of rice paper and deli paper. I've made them out of old envelopes. Cardstock can be challenging because it is hard to fold. I found that origami paper, because it comes as a square and it's two-sided, lends itself really nicely to adding splashes of color here and there. And of course, these have no kind of seasonality to them, so they're really beautiful all year round. Whether you look on YouTube or on people's blogs, again, like I said, there's lots of different ways to cut and get shapes and achieve looks that you want. Here's an example of one of the prints I did with the gel plate. I'm just cutting off the extra bit of white edges. I love that bit of botanical on it, and I wish I had more time to play around. I was a little bit on a deadline trying to get down for the last week of work, but I hope that you find some space or paper around your house to give this a try. I would pop in here and do a quick update on the Vilmax Barnes wetter by Lincoln Newman that I am knitting for my niece. I cast this on and I have re-engineered the pattern to be top down so I can't really comment on the instructional uh, experience of this pattern but the charts are all laid out and clear and I am using the numbers from that pattern um, but I'm also kind of doing a little mashup with Dog Star from Tin Can Knits um, so I've really just leaned heavily into the charts from this particular pattern. I'm pretty familiar with knitting yoke sweaters top down and so I've got you know I can kind of make up what I need um, from that. I think the sizing has been uh, problematic for me because I'm so used to knitting for kind of babies and toddlers and then me <laughs> um, making sure that this makes sense for an 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 year old um, that gets a little bit dicey like is it you know 30 inches that kind of starts to fall into adult sizing so tin can knits has been really helpful I've mentioned that and um, I also for this particular pattern adjusted the 
uh, size and weight of the yarn and my needles, so the gauge. I'm knitting the like, five-year-old kind of size from Vilmax Barn, um, but I've gone up. So there's been a lot of finagling, but here it is. Um, I finished the yoke. I've cast off for the sleeves. I'm really happy with the patterning of the paws and the contrast. I am using hazelnut as the main color, bear as the dark contrast, and marzipan as the yoke kind of <clears throat> uh, light. I've added short rows to the back. I did three sets of short rows and I used a, a blog or yeah blog tutorial from Barocco which kind of breaks down the numbers just to lift the back neck a little bit higher without interrupting the color work at the back neck. So I tend to add my short rows where the sleeves um, join the yoke um, and just so that it's a little bit higher um, and it will just kind of force this piece of the collar to come down. So re-engineering children's sizing, mashup. I will say that this yarn from Knitting for Olive, uh, it's spun worsted, it's multiple plied. I'm knitting this using, I don't even remember what these needles are called, but they're very pointy. And I've had a lot of trouble with splitting the yarn. Um, so the spin on it is, not, I wouldn't describe it as loose because this yarn feels very matte. It almost feels like I'm knitting with cotton. It doesn't have a lot of memory or plushness or bounce to it. And so, um, so that's kind of just been a little bit of frustration I've had, and perhaps switching to a needle with which is more blunt um, won't it won't catch um, in between those plies because there's multiple plies. I think that's um, as I mentioned as well described in Fruity Knitting. She does an interview with Knitting for Olive, so I do think it will wear very well uh, because it has. Uh, multiple plies, less surface area uh, for those little fibers to get out. Um, and it's very, cr it's a very crisp yarn. And so that contrast for the colorway, color work is, is beautiful. And I think it really pops those paws right out. So that's where I'm at. I am going to put some time into finishing thumbs on the um, Speedy Cell Boost by Skandier Knits. I highlighted those last time. I finished the second one in the brown and white and I just need to do the thumbs. Um, I've done some rearranging with gift ideas for those and I am still working on the second mitten in the Nash Island light, uh, the red and white. Um, so those kind of went to the back burner for a little bit while I got a hold on this. I am going to try this on Madison over the holiday and I'll be able to make some adjustments if I need to. The wonderful thing about knitting for an eight-year-old uh, is that they'll grow to be a nine-year-old and then a 10-year-old and an 11-year-old, right? So eventually this sweater will um, fit. I just do want to make sure that this neckline is uh, narrow enough that it stays on her shoulders uh, because everything else, sleeves, all that can be rolled up and she can bulk it out with um, layers underneath. On that note, we are receiving a really interesting storm here. Uh, lots of wind and heavy rain, and I am trying to get south of Bangor before one, when the storm is really supposed to ramp up. So I wanted to take a moment while I'm in the house um, to share this with you before I get on the road. Um, will I make four videos for turning of the year? I sure hope so. Um, I did speak a little bit about this in a Patreon vlog that I uh, recorded uh, about pace and presence and you know balancing the momentum I am you know feeling really festive and I am enjoying every moment but the commute is starting to wear on me a little bit uh, and wanting to enjoy my home but also wanting to enjoy my family so um, yeah so it feels a bit as I mentioned I, I've used that word a lot uh, quite a bit uh, spinning it's the spinning of the year and will she get four spins I don't know I really hope so I am so pleased that you're here and that you've joined me. Thank you so much. If you have invested in this podcast through Patreon or Coffee, thank you again. I am working on a way to upload the bonus vlogs over on uh, Coffee, so people who donate um, over in the month can access that extra content. And in the upcoming year, I am looking at ways to expand out. Um, 
the extra content that I provide for those that do uh, contribute uh, financially. So, um, so that's kind of brewing around, but we'll see what 2024 brings. We don't have to talk about that now because we have a couple more um, episodes together before that happens. On that note, I'm going to bid you a fond farewell, many blessings and fond wishes. Thank you again so much for sharing in the season with me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye.